You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got some special guests in the building. Yes. The owner of Club Lust and Love in Brooklyn, also DJ Spin King's brother, friend to the room. We have Star, my guy, my in the building. My man Star, what's happening, brother? And he brought, his, up, fellas? He brought his attorney with him. What's going on? Now, you know when somebody brings their attorney with them, it's a ser it's serious business. We heard you suing Charlemagne. Yeah, right. Nah. Is that true? Nah. Charlamagne had the same shirt on for four days, and then you're suing him. Is that true? He might be suing you for sexual harassment. <laughs> <laughs> Relax. Okay. So what's but going on today, He style? is suing the NYPD. Yes. For $125 million. Correct. What okay. happened? Um, you got to talk to the mic. So it's, I mean, it's more of a case that's been going on for like four years. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, owning the club, it hasn't been the easiest process. Mm -hmm. And I think... In our culture, we all work so hard to get to that point. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Of like, who doesn't want to own a club at the end of the day? Mm -hmm. And it's not just a club. It's more so a club for our culture. Mm -hmm. Like, who doesn't go to Lust? Who does, you know what I mean? And that's yeah, the that's reason. Yeah, that's what 6 9 and Casanova made peace last week. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Peacefully. Mm -hmm. Like, no problems. It's a place for hip-hop at the end of the day. So, because it is a hip-hop club is why it gets the target. Mm -hmm. It does. I want to say though that is that that says a lot when Six Nine and Casanova, who everybody know, it could have got real, real bad, real, real violent for them to come to your club and make peace there. Says a lot about your establishment. Yeah, and it was very peaceful mm -hmm. to the point where they even came inside and took pictures together, mm -hmm. sat next to each other. Not one argument, not one tussle. It was just love. Mm -hmm. And I guess that was one of the nights that I guess NYPD did hear that he was coming. Mm -hmm. That six nine was coming to the club, and I even told him, "Don't come." You get what I mean? Like I don't need this heat, and it's not fair for me to tell somebody, "Don't come to my establishment," right. because of police presence. Because it got to, it's to that point where we're like very scared of what they could do. Mm -hmm. So we we would always just like, "Yo, bro, please don't come tonight." And six nine to tell you, and it just so happened that he actually was not coming in the venue. He just happened to be outside. Really? He was dropping off somebody. And my old brother called me like, yo, he's outside. I'm like, didn't I tell you not to come here tonight? Mm -hmm. So as I'm talking to him, Casanova happened to be coming down the street. Mm. So then I'm like. This could be bad. Oh, man. This is the last thing I need right now with NYPD. Like, I look crazy right now. Mm -hmm. I told him he wasn't coming. And they're both here. Because right. I had no idea about this. I just happened to be outside perfect timing. So, you know, they all got their, you know, Casanova had his people with him. They were beyond respectful. Like, these guys don't disrespect the club. And mm -hmm. that's what, if you look at, there's no crime at the club. Mm -hmm. I look at Cass, I look at him, I said, listen, I don't want any problems. I can't even afford it. I'm like, not even opening my eyes at this point already. They're like, listen, this is the best place for us to, to have a conversation. I said, if all your guys could get in line before these police write me a disorderly ticket, because they write me things for... Anything they could cite me for, they're going to write me. Mm -hmm. So everybody got in line peacefully. The two of them spoke one-on-one -on -one for like 10 minutes. And they were like, can we just go inside for 10? I said, please, no problems. They were like, we promise you. And that was it. So all this big thing that was going on with NYPD 6 9 Casanova was pieced out in lust. Right. Mm. And but something that no one else was able to do. So what's the what's the cops' problem? I, there, there was rumor that uh, there was an officer who recently, I, I think, retired, that uh, was uh, asking for oh, money, they him and to step plane down. tickets, and stuff like that. What happened with that officer? Um, well, I don't know if they asked him to step down yet. If it was confirmed, okay. you know, I don't know the police side. It's, it's been a lot happening okay. in the last forty eight hours. But what happened with him was we put together uh, a great, you know, promoter of, of mine at the club, Richie, and the community all got together and did this big Puerto Rican block party, right? right? I remember. Uh -huh. So this was during the hurricane. So because the community of Sunset Park, I believe is like, what, 46% okay. Spanish? Right, like it's that? close to it. That's correct. So it was it was huge. There was bands playing outside. So mind you, every week I was speaking to this, this deputy inspector, right? Like, is the club going on? Every week I would communicate with them. This is the artist I have doing things that I technically didn't really... I don't know if every owner does, but just to keep that com line of keep communication. Piece, right. So I would go to him. I would speak to him because before he was there, there was a whole issue with another lieutenant named Myers. But we'll get into that part of it. Right. 
So Gonzalez asked me, um, I said, you know, he's Puerto Rican. I said, Would you, you know, we have this going on. He's part of a, a or organization. So he's like, listen, man, I um, can you get me uh, plane tickets on that Jay-Z jet that Rock Nation's doing, right, with Fat Joe? So I'm like, well, Joe is helping me get the stuff out. The, we filled up a whole 5,000 square foot garage front to back of goods mm -hmm. of the, you know, to go to Puerto Rico. Cardi B posted it. It was a lot of people that appreciated what was going on. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, since Joe's helping me with, with all this stuff, you know, he sent Joe, not for nothing, out of his pocket, sent like eight trucks to get these goods out, mm -hmm. to ship out. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, I was in communication with him. I said, let me ask to see what he could do, you know? At the same time, I want to be in good faith with my precincts, mm -hmm. you know? like the, And this is how hard I was going just to run a legit business. Isn't Correct. that kind of illegal, though, for him to ask you to do that? Well, yeah, that's the part I'll get into because, of course, okay, I was okay. in law enforcement. And that is definitely illegal. So no I don't asking. know the legalities of things. I mm -hmm. just want to run my business. You're talking about... A hip hop club that's never taken a prostitution charge, mm -hmm. a shooting, a underage, a narcotic charge. Like these are the major things that close a club. Mm -hmm. But I'm still going this hard. So I speak to him. I'm like, Joe, you know, if you could help me out as a friend. And he's like, listen, I could do two for you. You get what I'm saying? Whatever you do with it is what you do with it. I could do it for you. So I go back. I'm like, listen, I could do two. We could, you know. He's like, I need eleven on the private eleven jet. seats on a private. private jet. He said, I need eleven. So I asked Joe, like, dog, can I get a like? I look, I look. I'm shocked you asked. I'm shocked you even asked for the first <laughs> nah, So, but this is, I'm jumping out the window, Stop, bro. Because the police, you, bro. I would have hung up on you, bro. Yeah, bro. I'm just telling you, I'd have hung up and on so you. And so this is how my conversation <laughs> went. And we all know Joe. His exact words was, "My brother, I love you, but I can't." So I come back like, I can't do it. You get what I'm saying? And it was like, you know, like there's no, there's no, I can't do it. Then I get a text message. Can you send this generator to a doctor's office in Puerto Rico? Mm -hmm. First, it started with a phone call. And so he wanted you to send a generator on a private jet he, to Puerto Rico. To Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. However, I could get it there. See, I, I be asking for a little too much. I be asking for like bottles and a couple of ones to throw singles. These guys are asking for jets and generators. You're like, not, but but you're not a police officer. You're exactly. a DJ in the club. That's yeah, the stop. difference. That's right. Exactly. And then so then I'll I, I next time I'm coming to the club, I want a private jet, a private helicopter from my house to the club. But go ahead. <laughs> All right, we'll get to that, right? right? But you're my friend. Okay. Like I've known you before this, correct? Mm -hmm. I've known you yeah, before I've owned Lust. So um after he asked me for that, I actually reached out to a friend. I'm not. I'm like. I'm not calling Joe again for his. You know what I mean? Like, but Rock Nation was doing a lot for Puerto Rico at the time. Right. So I reached out to a friend of mine. His name was Bless, and I was like, "Can you help me?" Again, <laughs> jumping out the window. Mm -hmm. Can you get this generator on a plane for me? So I, from there, put him in touch with Deputy Inspector. Mm -hmm. So at this point, the inspector could know I'm not lying to you. Like I'm really trying. You right. know what I mean? And they spoke directly. There's proof that they got on the phone, they called each other, and he wasn't able to do it. And from that point on, if you look at the history of when major I've received more, that was October. I've received more citations at this club from January to now since this, the history of that building. The history of that property being there. That's that's a, a and every time I go in, and the reason why you lose is NYPD. My liquor license is granted by the state liquor authority, which right. is SLA. Mm -hmm. I can't win against them when NYPD is against you. So how many? So what are the violations for that they're giving you now? Um, he, the club's not getting the citations because there's nothing going on in the club. Yeah, I heard that they give them the people around the area. Correct. Second, I'm on 47th between Second and Third Avenue. So what I want to know is, how is even a human right or wrong? I'm going to give you a perfect example. Mm -hmm. He gave me a citation because somebody urinated, allegedly. Gave on, you a citation? He didn't give it to He wrote it to SLA. So I get the citation. Right, it so comes under my, co my corporation. Right. right. So on 2nd Avenue, allegedly, somebody urinated on the corner. There is a beer garden down the street from me, and there are bars on other blocks. 
People also live across the train. No one lives on my block. Who's to say where that guy came from? Right. I get it. He urinated outside. I got the citation. So he went outside. That's weird. Why do I don't get why you get the citation? It gets worse. So now every time I've been going into SLA court, when you go in, there's another council, right? That has like how you have the laptop. He has a board. So before the SLA judge makes his decision, he'll ask, is there anything else coming in? Now, Lieutenant Myers, every time I go into SLA, like if I have court on Wednesday, he sends up new charges on that Monday. So while the judge is talking to me, they're like, well, hold on. This guy has pending cases coming in. Wow. And I'm like, what? So part of me to SLA is like, the judge is just going by what, like, I look like a problem. Right. Like, he'll write me 16 charges. I'll beat 14 of them. Because they're all C summonses. Mm -hmm. So now, going back to the guy that urines, allegedly a girl came out the club. Don't tell that much. That's too... Graphic. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not gonna say. Mm-hmm. And she used the bathroom on herself. She peed on herself. I don't herself. Outside of lust. Okay, okay. Allegedly, gotcha. like she's outside. So I don't know if she used the bathroom on herself. Whatever. She, we don't know. How do you go in somebody's? So I never even knew about it. She gets in a cab. I get a, a letter in the, in the mail that I have another SLA charge. So I reach out to Lieutenant Myers. I speak at the end of the day. I speak to them. I call. I call. I communicate. I said, "Hey, man, I just got another charge. Like nothing has happened at the club." He said, "My officer told me a woman defecated on herself mm. outside of the club." So I said, "You send that to SLA?" And he was like, "Yeah, that's what you know." They said she was sitting on the on the on the, the curb that she was passed out waiting for a cab. I'm like, my older brother walked her outside. Like we called the cab for her. Mm-hmm. How do you know if it wasn't medication that made her use the bathroom? Did you guys blood test her to see if what was the issue? Did y'all serve milk in the club? Ice cream maybe? This is a this is a kitchen. Okay. The full kitchen. <laughs> she might be like, She might have had the mac and cheese. Yeah. Everyone loves the mac and cheese <laughs> at Lust. You know what I mean? But this is how ridiculous it is. So when I went to the SLA judge, they're like, they look at the charges, find me $20,000. For pooping? Well, for C summons. Poopity scoop. So while they're saying $20,000, it's like an auction. They look at the charges, $20,000. I'm like, okay, but I could stay in business. So, at this so the woman for defecating herself. That was the pending charge That's coming crazy. back in. So, tw- wait, so the $20,000 charge was for the... Urination? Was for pre, was, urination was part of one of them. Oh, another one was... They're trying to box you out. Another one is a guy coming out the club. It's winter. People wear big coats. A guy pays $200 for a bottle of Hennessy or whatever it is they're drinking at the time. They're walking out the club. They spot them right there. Security can't even... You're not down the block. You're right in front of the club because the police sit outside in my club. club. Right. And you DJ there. Yeah. Every single night you come to that club, mm-hmm. you get you park in the garage, you see them across the street mm-hmm. from beginning to end of the night. They sit there. Mm-hmm. Soon as somebody walks out the club with a bottle, they write that up that I'm still to SLA, I'm serving off premise. That was crazy. But there's a beer garden down the street, literally, like down the street. Yeah. We have full videos of them in front of my property with open beer containers during the day, walking around. They don't have nothing on on their license. Well, you know why? Because they're they're a white establishment. One hundred percent. And this is urban. And and, and that's why that... there's no clubs in New York City right now because they get a lot of heat for that. And there's always a lot of problems. And every you know people always ask me, Envy, how come you never bought a club or owned a club? Mm-hmm. I see what every club owner goes through with that's owning correct. a club, from the police harassing to the police pulling people over when they leave mm-hmm. to the police questioning people. And it gets to the point is that they, they really try to stop the money every which possible, where, whether it's giving you fines and try to bleed you out or scaring your patrons so they don't want to come back because you're always getting pulled over, always getting stopped. The other day I got pulled over leaving the club. But, I mean, I, I, I'm an asshole, so I was talking crazy. They let me go. <laughs> but I know what to do. I know what to say. I, you know, I, mm-hmm. I got people around. But a lot it's, it's, it's a big problem. So what's next for Club Lush? So this got all the way to Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. So when I recently went into Supreme Court to to the judge, she said, um, well, I personally don't care about this marijuana charge. Mind you, 
it's the marijuana charge again is somebody on Third Avenue. Mm -hmm. Somebody just smoking around the club. N none of these citations right. are inside right. the club. Right. Exactly. That's insane. And so she's like, but the amount of charges he sends up and the time frame he sends them up, they're back to back to back. Mm -hmm. We haven't even gotten and talk about the the legal fees this cost me. Every time he mm -hmm. sends up a charge, it's a separate case. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like every mm -hmm. time. So the Supreme Judge was just like, well, I don't care about this stuff. But NYPD is saying your club is a focal point. That they have to patrol your club every 15 minutes. At this point, I cannot sustain your license. Wow. Mm. So they, did they give you a warning at least at first? No. But because I'm a focal point to the NYPD, you know, the judge is going off what NYPD is stating. Like, why would the NYPD lie? So now they're trying to pull your liquor license. They canceled they, it. They canceled it already. It's technically canceled right now. So how are you still how are you still running and opening? I'm not. I this just all of this just happened on Wednesday. So Les really? is, is officially closed for now. Right now. Until he's served. And yeah, and I right. haven't been right. served yet by the SLA. But at this point, I don't even want to open my doors, even if I could. Because oh, yeah, they they'll do dirty. The, hour before. They, right. the club doesn't have anything wrong with it. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, something might happen. Right? All of a sudden. There might be a, a solicitor in charge or something. Yeah. I don't know what they could do at this mm -hmm. point. So I'm honestly scared to open my business because I do have a clean slate. They're trying, they they accusing me of something. They're saying the club, somebody left the club, right, to a hotel? Correct. And somebody went to a hotel in Sunset Park and supposedly they got set up at this hotel and this is Club Lust's fault. How is that your fault? <laughs> like, but how about you? How about... Sitting in front of my club where nothing happens, why don't you sit in front of the hotel? Yeah, 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 hundred percent. So now, what's what's next? What what can you do next? What's the next problem? I, I want to hear from the attorney. Yeah, like, I, I, I want to hear how many uh, illegal things have we heard just now well, that the police have done? Well, to unfortunately Star. for Star, this is not a new problem here. He's mm -hmm. just experiencing it. You know, I have other cases that are pending in other places that the police are doing the same thing. This is going on in the Caribbean community in the six seven and seventy first precinct, Brooklyn South. I have three cases pending in the 109 precinct area of Flushing. I don't know if you remember that. That's the karaoke bars where the police were shaking down the, the bar owners and stealing up to $800,000 from people because they thought there's stash money in those commands. There's another one in the 110 precinct from a former police officer, a former client, that's pending in the same Brooklyn federal court about the police shaking her down in the 110 precinct. So this is not a new, unique problem. Unfortunately, not enough people complain about it because there's so much cash involved they either drive them out of business with state liquor authority violations or they, they try to pay them because, of course, and the, the listeners need to know this, the police have no right to ask you for anything. That means tickets, plane tickets, television, bottles, anything. Police officers can't receive that. That's actually a crime. Mm. They can't even receive property. Mm. And these donations that are made to these different commands, such as what's going on in the um, 72nd Precinct, is the same problem. You can't directly give police officers money. That's what the New York City uh, Police Foundation is for. Money's supposed to go there, and then it trickles back down to the commands. That's to cut down on corruption. But with a cash business, they figure, well, listen, your lifeblood is your liquor license. So what do I do? Oh, um, I'm having course. an event. So you know what? Uh, contribute to me. And then you give it to them, not knowing any better. That's actually a crime, and that's how they take money. And it's not to start. There's other businesses around there that are going to come on board next week. I'm going to come out with probably another nine businesses in that area. And they're not hip-hop. So they can't say, oh, it's just hip-hop. They have no credibility. These one particular company has lots of credibility. It's a legacy company. So now what are they going to say? They have connections to the mayors and the governor's office. And they've cost them millions of dollars over the period of time. So cops in that area have been shaking people down? Absolutely. For years. And no like. one comes out and speaks because they're scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the fact that once this article came out, the amount of business owners that reached out to him a woman even came to meet me. You know what I mean? And they were, I'm like, wow, this is, because I thought it was just me. You know what I mean? And now they're shaking down people and the track records show if they did do something one year, there was no problems. Correct. The next year, they're like, they smarten up. Like, I shouldn't have to do this to run a business. All of a sudden, everything gets denied. It's almost like the mob. So now, you know, there's a lot of people that club love and lust. You know, employees. Employees. You, you got a lot of strippers. You got a lot of bartenders. You got a lot of security. You got a lot of chefs, cooks. So now, what happens? Busboys. What happens to these people during this time? They're out of jobs. Damn. 
for no reason. And and to me, at the end of the day, like I walked in the club the other day and I saw one of my bus boys cleaning. Mm -hmm. And that really bothered me. Because this man, you know, he has children, he has babies. This is what they live off. Right. This is what feeds them. 100%. And mm -hmm. I, can, I can take it on the chin if the club was doing wrong. Right. People want to see my security invoices a week. You know what I mean? What I'm paying on security to make sure nothing happens at this establishment. Mm -hmm. And for what? They, they'll, that, they'll charge me for things that go over. the Mind you, this club last year alone, what we had, 12 911 calls for a whole year? Damn. 12 911 calls, but I lost this case because I'm a focal point. But why am I a focal point? Because it's a black urban hip hop club. There's nothing that happens. So here. What's next? Because I know I thought the Supreme Court was the highest place we can go. Supreme Court is Supreme Court, and then you could go into the appellate division. But oh. the appellate division, I can't go there till nine months. So basically, that's how long uh, it takes, right? That's correct. So, so the club will be closed nine months? Well, SLA at this point, right? You can speak on that part. It's at their attention because I guess SLA just went off of NYPD's say so. But you haven't been served yet. I haven't been served uh, yet. Man, I would rock out this weekend. This Memorial Weekend too, man. I but would I, rock out. But man. Nah, I, it's not. I it's it. not worth it, I bro. Risk yeah. it. See, if he's got to worry about another problem. It's just not him. You have to worry about your patrons because you have an obligation to make sure that they have a safe environment, and that's the problem. And they've already said in a Facebook post. If you look on my Twitter feed, you'll see it. They said, "Well, we know there's no problems there because the community's not complaining, but there's nothing around there. It's an industrial area. Mm -hmm. It's a focal point because of selective enforcement by the police. There's no other reason for them to be over there." other than to harass the people. And I said it before to the client and to other people in the industry. Listen, what it boils down to is they are jealous of the fact that you have people of color that are able to establish an income, earn an honest living, and be able to enjoy themselves, and they can't stand it. That's what it boils down to. This goes back to time of dress got back to 1845, and you look at the cases, how black people have, well, have no rights. That's what this boils down to. It's no different in 2018. Now, what's 50 Cent's involvement? Because I've seen 50 Cent posting about it. Well, you know, Fifth is really like a big brother to me. Mm -hmm. He's like a mentor. He's he, like, it's crazy because mm -hmm. this is so bad. The lieutenant, you know, Fifth comes here all the time. Mm -hmm. He also spends Christmas at my parents' home. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? This isn't just, it's really my friend, a, a, a mentor, mm -hmm. a brother. The lieutenant seen him there so much, availed to the SLA, wrote me a summons that I'm availing my liquor license to him. To <laughs> what? You believe they subpoenaed my record, my bank records and everything to come up short. There's nothing there. He's just, but this is how they've tried everything to stop me. Mm. You get what I mean? Mm. And then he told me afterwards, you know, that inspector that came to write you these summonses was also what, what, what did he do? Oh, well, he's involved. In, he's involved in all these cases related to the state liquor authority. He's also a person who retired from the police department. He's a police captain. And let's just say people that are not like him, he tends to selective enforcement against. And that's me saying it in a nice way because mm -hmm. I try to be generous sometimes, although I'm pretty much You like to shake shooter. down black and brown people. Oh, exactly. But well, what was oh, his absolutely. reason for retiring from that one? <laughs> well, he retired, and, you know, you see it. And actually, you can Google his name, and you can see the stuff that's happened to him. But he's always been a controversial person. But unfortunately, he's at the State Liquor Authority, and they are so far— still employing him. The interesting part is, although Star didn't say this, although technically the license is canceled, remember this administrative board, they can look at it and don't think they're not political either. They read the news and see what's going on. They can, if they want to, simply say, wait a minute, we re-reviewed this and now after re the review, we're going to renew. They did it actually in one of my other cases, in the 360 Lounge case with the karaoke bars in Flushing. They all of a sudden gave them back their license. So, so why why one hundred and twenty five million dollars? Well, that is a starting point. If you look at the, when the notice of claim, I actually did a little research about the hip hop community in mm -hmm. general. Of course, I'm part of it because I'm from Queens. I went to Jackson High School, okay. so <laughs> I'm a Queens guy. With the Andrew Jackson. Oh yeah, Jackson. That was my zone school. My mom <laughs> said it, they got metal detectors. I can't go there. <laughs> it's an interesting school, but a lot of good people came out of there. But anyway, um, what it boils down to is that. There's approximately, at least back in 2006 going forward, it's about $500 billion of discretionary income that's spent from the hip-hop community. And he's entitled to a piece of it. Mm. And since he's the only business in town, essentially, if you look at 
and scale it out over years, he could easily make more than $125 million. That's just against the city of New York, by the way, because you had to put some notice of claim in the in the uh, you know the claim. And the last case I took to trial is $15 million, and the city's still trying to get out of it. And that was about two years ago. So scale it out, $125 million is actually a pretty conservative number. Henry, right. you, own, you own businesses, right? Correct. What if when you had your business, the precinct, com- the lieutenant comes to you and says, if you open on Christmas, I'm going to write you tickets to the SLA. That's Damn. crazy. I mean, they did that because I guess they didn't want to patrol there in front of Christmas and have extra coffee, which is foul. They can't, they can't do that. So I did that the f- one year. Or you didn't open up Listen on Christmas. Listen to Charlamagne. One year, I closed. I've done everything in my power to, I just want to run my business. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I listened to him. Because at the time, this guy was sitting in front of my club every, the lieutenant himself. You would think this is the only club or the only thing in this in Sunset Park. Every night, start to finish, he was sitting in front of my club. Mm-hmm. First, it was we were the capacity issue. We were legally capacity, 200 and change at the time. We de- He would tell us, you're over capacity, no one else is going inside. You're not the fire department. Right. We listened. We spent $100,000 to build three new staircases in the club that did not exist in the, I don't own that property. Mm-hmm. We invested $100,000, my partner at the time and me. And what did we get? A 600 and change capacity. So now it was no longer capacity issue. Then he moved inside to building stuff, like paperwork, you know what I mean? After me and my last partner stepped down and it just became solely me, I've went and I fixed every single building code, anything you could think of, the code, mm-hmm. the building is up to par on all levels. Department of Buildings, mm-hmm. Health. So he no longer does these business inspections, which are? Illegal. Federal I, court already decided that in 2001. And I never knew that. Mm-hmm. So they would just pop up and inspect the building. But they shut shut down everything, give me all these citations. But now he knows I'm legit inside. So if you look at his traits from capacity to paperwork, now the paperwork's all the way up to par. It's C summonses. So all the C summons that are happening on the block is what he's sending to SLA. Now, did you reach out to IA, Internal Affairs, at all? Um, They actually recently... They, they reached out to Star. Mm-hmm. You know, but they already know Tennessee... Look, I could tell you about Internal Affairs because I'm from that police culture. They do absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. It's just window dressing for the public and it's designed to protect the police commission and their legacy. That's what it's designed for. But the thing they do know is if I take a case on, that they could do whatever they want to do. I really don't care. Once I dig into it, that's it. All the stuff's going to be exposed. That's why all the stuff is coming out now. So you think f- they'll probably settle then? They may not settle, but if they we go to trial, if it has to go that far, then we're ready to litigate. And then, then when you go to trial, all the corruption that they've been doing gets exposed. Exactly. Because I know a whole lot of it. I have it related in other cases. I heard Al Sharpton is getting involved. I haven't heard from him. So what's, what, what can the people do? To, to help if they can help. Is there anything that they can do? I mean, I think but just be vocal. Mm-hmm. I mean, because I feel like I'm privileged to have the friends I have, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, that are able to give the platform, knowing you guys, somebody like 50 Cent mm-hmm. that's able to come out and speak. This happens every single day yeah. to minority owners all in all five boroughs. No one challenges NYPD, number one. A lot of people are like, yo, bro, you're crazy. Be careful, your safety. You don't know what these guys could do. Now I have to watch over myself from the people that are supposed to protect you at the end of the day. Mm. You know what I mean? And I'm just trying to be a voice for all businesses to come out and speak. One day a newspaper came out, 10 other businesses from our, from Sunset Park alone contacted my attorney. Well, you know, we wish you the best of luck and you know, we always will support you. Correct. And we appreciate you for coming up here and telling your story. And thank you, sir. I, I missed your name. Eric Sanders. Eric, Eric Sanders. Sanders. Appreciate you. If they want to reach you, where they can hit you up, Star? Uh, well, they can get me at 212-652-2782, or you can find me on the internet. You Google me, uh, the Sanders Firm PC, and you'll find my website. What about you, Star? My Instagram is uh, at StarDNR. And anybody in the community, man, that's going through the same thing Star's going through, hit them up. Like Y'all should really be coming together at a time like this. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. try to put this together. And I appreciate you guys for giving us a platform. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you very much. All right. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning.